So intro to the human body. So as a science, anatomy is often going to be defined as the study of the structure of an organism and the relationship of its parts. The word anatomy, that is going to be derived from two word parts that mean cutting apart. So physiology, on the other hand, that's going to be the study of functions of living organisms and their parts. Physiologists will use our scientific experimentation to tease out how each of the activity of the body works um, and how it's regulated, as well as how it fits into the complex coordinated operation of our entire um, human organism as a whole. Discussions about the body, the way that it moves, its posture, or the relationship of one area to another is going to assume that the body as a whole is in a specific um, position called our anatomic position. So this reference position, uh, then the body is going to be in an erect or standing position with the arms at the sides and then palms turned forward. The head will also point forward, as will your feet. And those are going to be aligned at the toe, and then they will be set slightly apart. The anatomic position is going to be a reference position that gives meaning to the directional terms that we will describe to the body part and their region. So in other words, then you'll need to know this anatomic position in order to know how to apply those directional terms that we'll talk about correctly. When you're in the supine position, then that just means that you are lying face upward and in the prone position, then the body's going to lie face downward. The terms that are laid out here, these are going to be used to describe relative positions of your body parts. On many of your figures, you'll see this little compass that's down in the right hand side. And instead of it being labeled in your typical north, south, east, west, then you do have anatomical compass. The anatomical compass is going to be labeled with abbreviated anatomical directions. So you have your superior, your left, your inferior, and your right. So superior just means that it's towards the head. So that's going to be the quote unquote north. Your inferior is going to be towards the feet or your quote unquote south. Um, and then your left and right are actually going to be flipped. So the reason that your left and your right are flipped is because if I'm looking at Tina, then um, my right is going to be her left, right? And then her left is going to be my right. Um, so whenever you're looking at this anatomic compass here, you, it's like you are looking at a person. So your left is going to be that person's right. In order to facilitate the study of individual organs or the body as a whole, then we often have to subdivide it or cut it into smaller sections. So this can be done with actual cuts within a dissection or it can be done virtually. Um, so within our medical imaging, such as our CTs or our MRI. In order to understand the cut, um, you must imagine a body being divided by an imaginary flat plane. Um, and so we'll talk about a couple of those here. Your sagittal plane, that is going to run lengthwise from front to back. So it's going to be um, that purple one here. So it's going to cut you into left and right sections. Um, mid sagittal just means that it goes directly in down the middle. So down your nose, down your navel, in between the two legs. So it's going to cut it into direct left um, or equal. Your frontal plane, um, that is going to run from side to side, and it's going to give you a front and a back portion. It's also known as the coronal plane. So it's going to be this green plane here. So you see that it cuts the body into the front half and then the back half. And then lastly, you have your transverse plane, and that's going to be a horizontal plane that gives upper and lower portions. Typically, it will be right at that navel area, um, and it'll give you your upper portion above the navel and then below the, um, your legs and your hips below. Um, but that one can pretty much run anywhere, especially when you're having those CTs and those MRIs. Um, 
Um, the body is going to be made up of open spaces or cavities that will often contain well-ordered arrangements of our internal internal organs. Um, you're going to have your dorsal cavity. So you're going to see that one here on the left. So your dorsal cavity is going to be split between the vertebral cavity and your cranial cavity. So the cranial cavity, that's going to be the space inside the skull that contains the brain. And then your vertebral cavity, that is going to have your thoracic cavity and your abdominal pelvic cavity. Um, so the upper portion of that, that is going to contain the mediastinum and your pleural cavity. And then the lower, I'm sorry, your, sorry, your vertebral, not your ventral. Sorry, I totally started reading the wrong line on that. Um, your vertebral cavity is going to include um, obviously your vertebrae. And then your ventral cavity. So we're now going to talk about this one over here on the right hand side. Your, the, your ventral cavity is going to contain your thoracic cavity and your abdominal pelvic cavity. Um, <clears throat> so the upper portion is going to contain the mediastinum, which is what... Um, um, sorry, your mediastinum is going to be here in the chest, and then it's going to be above your diaphragm, and then your lower is going to be where you have your abdominal cavity as well as your pelvic cavity. So you can see here that um, from the side, your ventral cavity is going to be everything in front of your vertebral column. And then from the front, you see that it's just everything that's right here. Now, to make it easier to locate your organs within the abdominal pelvic cavity, then you, we have divided them into four different abdominal pelvic quadrants. So as you can see, the mid sagittal and the transverse planes are gonna pass through the navel um, area, and then they will divide that into the abdominal pelvic region into your four quadrants. So again, your right upper is gonna be on your left. Your right lower is gonna be on your left. And then your left upper is here and your left, oh, um, your left lower is gonna be on your right. Now, a more precise way to divide the abdominal pelvic cavity is gonna be into your nine different abdominal pelvic regions. So it's gonna be kind of like you're playing a little game of tic-tac-toe. So your number one, again, is gonna be on the left-hand side, but that's gonna be the right hypochondriac. Number two is gonna be the left hypochondriac. Number three is going to be your epigastric, so that's going to be um, in the middle on the top. Sorry, I'm closing the door here real quick. Um, and then number four, you have your right lumbar, which is going to be on the left-hand side, or it can also be referred to as the right flank. Number five on the right side is going to be the left lumbar or left flank. Dead center is going to be your umbilical region. Number seven is going to be your inguinal or your right inguinal, also known as your right iliac. Number eight is your left iliac or your left inguinal. And then number nine, bottom center, that's going to be known as your hypogastric. Now, to identify and correctly describe your specific body areas, that is going to be particularly important within your health sciences. For a patient to complain of pain in the head is not going to be as specific, and therefore it's not as usual or as useful for a physician or a nurse to um, give more specific and localized descriptions, such as facial pain. So by using a correct anatomic term, such as um, your forehead, cheek, or chin in order to describe the area of pain, then the attention can be focused more quickly on the specific anatomic area that may need attention. Now, your body as a whole can be divided into two major portions of components. You have your axial 
and your appendicular. So your axial is going to contain your head, your neck, and your torso. So basically what is on that center axis. And then your appendicular, it's going to be your upper and your lower extremities. And that will also include your shoulder girdle and your pelvic girdle. So in the picture, your appendicular region is going to be all of the purple. And then your axial is going to be like that yellowish bone color. 